the last segment of our uh, course will be the the stakeholder management part uh, how to manage your stakeholders pretty interesting again uh, pretty much related to the communication uh, management part of the project also uh, so the stakeholder is nothing but in very simple terms first you try to identify who are the stakeholders of your project so you as a project manager will have to identify uh, the people and your it can be outside organizations also um, that could uh, that could impact uh, i mean uh, that could impact your project and also that could be impacted they could be impacted so maybe uh, you're building a highway so then there can be stakeholders could be the people who is living in that area who is getting impacted their houses will be uh, broken down because of the uh, highway is getting built so both way side uh, and also you might you will have to identify stakeholders who will impact your one your ones your project also maybe regulators maybe uh, the the people who are giving you permits to build the highway mm, or or the maybe the finance ministry who is giving the funds uh, so uh, who will have a definite impact of your project schedule and project um, project on your project and also the other way around the stakeholders may be the people who are also getting impacted by your activities of the project so when it comes to management uh, once you identify then obviously you is you, you as a project might have to start analyzing the expectations here obviously we can connect the uh, with our change management uh, studies that we have learned and the project change management strategies uh, how the expected level of desire can be taken from the stakeholder um, if it is resisting how can be how can we change it uh, to uh, come to our project and support our project so once you have identified the stakeholders you will have to start analyzing each and individual stakeholder uh, for their expectations. So expectations can be differ, differ from each and everybody. Your CEO's expectation of your project and uh, down the line the factory manager's expectation of the ERP project can be different. Uh, that, that's maybe since there are different expectations maybe that's why they are resisting to the change. So these are all tangled each, each other. The communication plan, the stakeholder management plan and the change management is all tangled to each other and you will have to analyze the expectation level and uh, and their impact of on the project and then management management is all about developing strategies and then once you once you have analyzed the expectations and the impact on your project what's the impact on your project whether it's a resistant impact or a positive impact or a negative impact uh, then of obviously the management expert aspect is try to develop strategies how to uh, mitigate these impacts and how to get the effective effectively how to get the most from your stakeholder into the project so tailoring considerations as usual uh, how the strategy for stakeholder will differ from project to project how the strategy that you as a project manager uh, of stakeholder management will differ from project to project um, again will depend on the stakeholder diversity of the stakeholders uh, who are in the project I mean, if it is a and uh, if it is a government project then it's a different ball game uh, of handling those stakeholders who are rigid uh, red tape stakeholders are there and uh, so it depends on the culture of the customers organization that you're going to work as a project manager uh, for the ERP system so um, so diverse um, diverse culture in different organizations um, if you if you have if you're drawing resources uh, from foreign then the diversity of the resources or the foreign um, resources that you're drawing who's a stakeholder of your project so the stakeholder diversity diversity will differ will tend to um, tailor your strategy of stakeholder handling then the comp complexity uh, if a large project like a highway or a building a dam or something like that where many people are affected uh, the complexity and the relationships the political relationships or the networks after networks relationships um, definitely will uh, you as a project manager will have to uh, adjust your strategy 
more the complexity of uh, the stakeholders involved uh, um, maybe your community uh, is involved or the, um, the religious community is involved and it's uh, highly agita agitated or basically uh, the media is involved so more the complexity of the relationships then uh, you will have to make different different strategies then again the communication technologies um, luckily the technology is now available and uh, and uh, uh, and you can have uh, many technologies to communicate with these stakeholders different stakeholders um, uh, you can uh, email your reports a month you may email your project status reports or have an intranet to publish your reports for a large projects like uh, like uh, road building uh, you can uh, you can actually publish on your website uh, on your project plans or whatever the uh, impacted community uh, impacted notices for the community um, so your communication technology will actually uh, again will be a major input to you to decide on what strategy that you should hand stakeholders uh, referencing the stakeholder project management to agile uh, as you know agile is all about participation active participation with your stakeholders so uh, regular interactions after each um, iterative cycle uh, there can be um, review meetings with the stakeholders to show them the the shippable product that you have built during the iterative cycle so uh, there will be a regular interaction with your stakeholders um, stakeholder in the agile uh, throughout the agile project process so this this regular interaction with the uh, during the agile uh, project management will actually reduce the risk project risk because it will it will build the trust uh, it will be the trust between you uh, you as a project manager your team and also with the other stakeholders in the project it will it will it will um, reduce the risk of the project failure and uh, and also you might be able to get the this necessary support and uh, step by step so uh, agile um, outright invites stakeholders for project review meetings and uh, and then any project artifacts any project documents um, are actually are transparently um, transparently uh, shared between the stakeholders in agile framework and uh, maybe in an intranet or uh, so that uh, any there is it, it try to reduce any surface from misalignment so misalignment happens because of communication basically uh, your one stakeholder is not updated another stakeholder is updated uh, on a certain certain issue so then there is conflict because the one stakeholder is not updated so there is misalignment so communication so as i told you stakeholder communication and change management all going to each other hand to hand to avoid this misalignment so <clears throat> identify stakeholders is will be the first thing you as a project manager has to do uh, to break the silence uh, from where basically you can identify the stakeholders of a project initially As a project manager from back and you can identify your stakeholders <clears throat> anyone Yeah, yeah, that will be the starting point. That definitely that you will start identifying the stakeholders of your project. Mm. One 
what is Case. Business case will also give you then actually each and every part of your project management we start identifying um, maybe the project um, the requirement trace, requirement traceability matrix who and who gave the requirement so this requirement was given by this quality requirements given was given by the factory manager so the factory manager is important stakeholder for you right uh, so likewise uh, there will be a uh, n number of uh, places you as a project manager that you can start gathering information of identifying stakeholders uh, to sum it up uh, as yes as you said uh, the project charter the business case the business case will give you the initial stakeholders say if you are building a factory uh, the initial stakeholders affected maybe you have to clear some people who are around the um, living in the factory area so because it's a toxic factory maybe so those are the people you have to need come give compensation and relocate those um, residents around the factory so uh, the, those are will be the initial stakeholders there who are affected and benefited by the project uh, maybe you are building a, uh, a supermarket or maybe an area so then the stakeholders actually they are benefiting maybe the local community will get jobs so uh, the local community between the age of 25 to 30 years will be one of your stakeholders that you will have a separate communication plan for them to once the factory is up uh, that you will, they can start applying for the job so they are benefited by the project so the business case itself will give you the, who are the affected and the benefited uh, the communication plan and that we had did uh, in the last session it's it's they also we identified uh, certain stakeholder wise uh, uh, what are the communications and how stakeholder wise the communication differs and then as i told you the communication stakeholder that's a strong link and the communication plan will also give you, uh, you as a project manager good knowledge about who are the stakeholders of the um, of the project then uh, simple things like um, uh, change log i mean uh, uh, the uh, may may introduce uh, if along when the project is going on a change management log uh, change request log will also give you a new requirements as confirm a new new stakeholder that you never thought of so now he is a part of your project uh, maybe a issue log a issue was faced by a stakeholder that you never thought of and now you have recorded in the issue log that this guy has raised an issue now he is a stakeholder of your project because now you have to satisfy him to um, to resolve the issue the requirement documentation as i told you requirement requirement traceability matrix will give you the uh, stakeholder list then agreements definitely agreements will give you the stakeholder list um, basically from the signature itself will give you the first, who is the first key stakeholder of your customer side from the signature of the agreement plus all other agreements supply agreements uh, will all, always give you all the list of stakeholders that is required that you need to tackle in your project right so once <clears throat> once the stakeholder list is done then uh, then actually it's, it's it's time to understand the the the, uh, the uh, what you call the uh, uh, the, the the power structures and the power and how they influence how they will influence the project so uh, uh, basically again uh, to identify stakeholders once again uh, you can the, your regulators the knowledge of the industry will be helpful maybe you are doing a, a project for the insurance industry and uh, the insurance regulator maybe you will have to pass certain uh, regulatory uh, issues maybe uh, maybe you are doing a maybe you are doing a, what you call a, a mobile uh, online account opening mobile app for a bank then definitely the central bank and the, uh, the, uh, the FIO unit of the central bank is, is a definite stakeholder because they will have to clear the process of online account opening uh, to do such project in Sri Lanka so you, you will have to take the central bank clearance so the regulators will be a definite important uh, stakeholder of your project maybe the environment again the environmental authority uh, will be uh, or the culture of an organization will be a definite input for you to identify the stakeholders sometimes you might have to you might have to do some brainstorming and maybe sometimes you 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 prefer to do a question to find out the stakeholders if you are a larger stakeholder larger project 
and once that is done uh, you will have to do something called stakeholder analysis stakeholder analysis is nothing much uh, it's where you try to understand the stakeholders once you had identified the stakeholders to try to identify understand you as a project manager you try to understand their interest what is the expectations levels and what is the influence how much influence that they can do a politically uh, motivated persons can do a much b b bigger influence on the project and what type of interest some certain people although they are a stakeholder they might have not have much interest on the project sometimes uh, some stakeholders may have a large interest on their on your project and to that you try to identify the stakeholders relationship to your to your project so once you have identified the stakeholders then you will have to do a stakeholder analysis and see what are their interest what are their expectations what are the influence level to your project so so three steps in the um, stakeholder analysis first you identify the potential stakeholders from all these documents agreements and everywhere where you can find it uh, you find the potential list of all the stakeholders of your uh, of your project uh, maybe you can have columns of, um, of in which department they are in which position they are so you identify the influence level um, their expectation level uh, you can identify in, in a column in your form, column in a form in a simple excel sheet then you try to analyze as i told you earlier also analyze the potential impact or the potential support that each stakeholder can generate and you can classify those stakeholders into certain certain groups these are the high high impact stakeholders these are the high influencer influential stakeholders so i had to i had to keep an eye as a project manager for these high influential fellows um, these are the fellows that can impact me uh, who has a who has a more power and uh, powerful peer person i mean uh, authoritative power so i have to be careful of these stakeholders so you can classify your stakeholders and each classify each classified segment will have a separate strategy to tackle those classified persons of your stakeholders and uh, so and uh, and the plan you as a project manager how to influence them the plan to how to how to influence them will depend on the classification that you do so classifying uh, these are some, there's a n number of classification definitely to go through uh, these are some of the classification that you can um, think of uh, the power and the interest the, the, the authority power of your organization uh, maybe you are going for a customer site uh, for a erp implementation so you will have to understand according to the organization structure who are the most powerful people in that organization uh, the authority and the power uh, and in the certain people um, and the, uh, you can have the power and the interest group grid i mean basically you can have um, you can you can consider the authority the power and also the interest level uh, they are very interested of the project interest and influence will be different i mean certain people are maybe interest but they can't influence much but certain people also maybe with the power of the authority they can influence the project outcomes i mean um, they can probably the final signatures of the uat they can really influence you of the project uh, then you can actually categorize on the impact level that they 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 provide you the the uh, the impact or the uh, the impact that they can bring on to your project on the execution so these are not these are actually examples of uh, of stakeholder classifications that some examples of stakeholder classification and you can define your your level of classification of um, uh, stakeholder analysis of of your interest uh, so some people classify on power and interest some people classify on the power and influence level influence and impact level so likewise you can classify keep on classifying your stakeholders and uh, and then you can do a simple charting like this uh, where the power mm, this for example of a power interest grid where the power and the interest is given like this and uh, you can start dotting out or plotting out your stakeholders where they stand and then you can have a clear idea of how what are the strategies that you can develop to tackle these stakeholders so people sometimes 
uh, have a low power and a low interest maybe you will have to keep a monitor on there people who have a low power but then high interest they are very interested of this project then of course but they can't they don't have power or they don't maybe uh, in the impact they can't do much impact to your project maybe the impact grid they can't do much impact to your project then it's a matter of keeping them informed uh, maybe seen people who with high power like your ceo and the high power uh, oh no it can be wrong example ceo might be in this this grid uh, who have a high power but have low interest maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, another 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 business unit head who is a very high power person but then much might not have much interest on the project that is currently running maybe you can keep him satisfied maybe for your ceos and directly powerful people who are already involved in your project who is interest of the outcome then of course you will have to manage them closely so your strategies might depend on each box that you put here and uh, maybe the classification depends on the classification that you do classify your stakeholders so <clears throat> so the outcome of identifying stakeholders is definitely the stakeholder register so you the list of names and organ organizations or whatever the stakeholders you can have contact numbers of those stakeholder register uh, you can you can actually jot down your stakeholder wise what are their major requirements what are their major expectations so that will be handy when you're tackling the change management part of it um, how level of interest they have the level of influence that they can have whether they are in, internal stakeholders or external stakeholders the impact the power and the, the influence level that they can have so all these grids of your stakeholder in their chart you can start filling in once you start identifying your stakeholders <coughs> got that yes sir. like one one small question mm -hmm. sir like uh, uh, in, a, in a particular project mm -hmm. so like who would be the most important person in the project like in general the stakeholders or what? I would say the, uh, the sponsor because he is the one who is spending the money and he is the one who is uh, sponsoring the project. So sponsor is the key person of for a project manager where sometimes you might be directly reporting to the sponsor also. So after the sponsor uh, then of course uh, you will have to see again uh, by doing this you might have to understand who is the most affected person and who is the uh, uh, the the other level of stakeholders you will have to start ranking now so you can have your first level stakeholders and the second level guys uh, third level guys like that uh, depending on the um, influence and the power or the impact level sometimes it, it's that's right so this classification is very important sometimes because of the impact maybe you're doing a uh, even an ERP project I mean sometimes the people that you might think that uh, you might think that might not have done much in much damage to your project maybe uh, the people who is getting impacted more who, who is going to get changed more maybe the factory double employees who need to use the new ERP system uh, might be the a key stakeholder that you will have to tackle in very safe safely especially if they are if you if your customers organization uni, unionized and they might call a union strike because of the ERP system who knows got it yeah it happened by a simple project like finger fingerprint they said it's unhealthy the health workers can remember in 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 the hospital of sri lanka and there was a huge they refused to keep their finger finger biometrics uh, attendance because <laughs> because of fingerprint machines uh, so uh, there was a union uh, effect there so uh, never knows where it strike comes in so uh, quickly go through uh, I might not spend much time uh, on this uh, uh, the planning part of it uh, is again uh, how do you plan your stakeholder engagement so it's a, it's a matter of uh, 
planning how now once you have identified uh, the stakeholders once you have classified now you have a very good visibility of who are the powerful guys who are the impacted guys who are the um, interest guys who are the influential guys so once you know these parameters uh, then it's a matter of drawing up the plan of how you are going to engage these guys uh, in your project uh, what are the strategies uh, what are the strategies that you do to effectively engage the stakeholders throughout the project so um, uh, in uh, uh, in the engagement level then again uh, uh, you can do a stakeholder engagement assessment um, it's like uh, it's like the change management if you can remember the desired state and the, the, the current state and the future state uh, if you can remember it's so you can do a sting stakeholder engagement assessment where you try to compare the, currently this fellow is in this state and this is a very powerful fellow and very important fellow I can make use of use of him and I need somehow to bring the fellow into the planned state the desired state uh, maybe the currently he he is he is resistant uh, maybe a powerful guy who is resistant to the project and then I need to bring him to probably to the leading state or to the supportive state so these are some of the uh, uh, engagement levels that you can catch by maybe there are some stakeholders who are unaware of the project uh, impacts so they are unaware maybe you are building a road and uh, some people some household people are aware and some household people are unaware that their houses are going to break so those stakeholders are unaware then you will have to you will have to start informing him informing them maybe some stakeholders are resistant level some fellows are neutral as always some fellows are supportive and some fellows are beyond supportive and they are at, at the leading forefront so uh, once you so you can have a simple table like this and your stakeholders are there your CEO or whatever the stakeholders that you have you are listed down your affected parties and which box they are they are currently they are currently in the uh, unwear state and the desired state is the supportive state so once this is done it's very clear about your strategies now you know you know what to do to bring these fellows from this unwear state to the supportive state people who are from resistance state to the supportive state you can do change management strategies that we have discussed from resistance stage to the supportive stage um, people who are neutral who are neutral um, uh, of any change happening in their organization um, maybe you will have to bring them to the supportive stage or sometimes to the leading stage so so strategies for each each and every block will be different uh, for each and every stakeholder will be different so once this is done actually it's a bit a bit it will be a bit of a complex stuff because each stakeholder I've got each stakeholder group wise you will have to uh, you will have to sit down and brainstorm how how I can bring them from this state to the desired state uh, and uh, so once that is done actually uh, you're very clear on your stakeholder engagement then you're very clear when you meet the fellow on the corridor even now you are very sure this fellow is a resistant this fellow I, I can remember this fellow is was in the resistant block uh, even when you're when you're talking to that fellow you're careful and you're trying to persuade him then you will be always preaching him on the benefits of the project and even if you meet him in the corridor for each stakeholder your 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 approach and your style of communication will be different um, if you are a, if you if you are already a guy who is in supportive stage very much then you will be some sometimes when you talk to him during informal meetings or formal meetings you try to put him to the leadership position so that he will take the leadership and he will start uh, he will start uh, he will start give you full 100% support and he will he will give you uh, he he will give a lecture to his um, so his subordinates let's support this um, project so so uh, so once this analysis is done uh, the this matrix is done definitely uh, it, it will be very simple for you for a project manager to uh, understand the desired level and uh, and the current level engagements and um, uh, identify the interrelationships and the communication requirements so now you know and to how to communicate with this fellow um, for the persons who are supportive then maybe the report will be more descriptive 
the, the persons who are resistant maybe the report will be in different style uh, then uh, the language and the format and the, the maybe they are they are resistive because it's an English it's a language matter then maybe you will be communicating in the native language for the people who are resistant uh, so so n number of strategies can be thought of after doing this analysis and the time frame maybe the time frame and the frequency of updating them on the project information will differ from person to person the category that we have categorized so <clears throat> so the stakeholder engagement plan uh, once once you have done the matrix uh, this will give you a proper idea as a project manager how the communication for each week with each stakeholder can be done Here it's simple. Uh, it's now you are in the execution process, and now you are managing the stakeholder engagements. So, depending on the plan that you have derived, uh, now we are starting to communicate with them in different different method uh, to meet the expectations and to address the issues as they occur and foster the um, appropriate stakeholder en engagement. So you will be communicating depending on the plan that you have set set up. You will be communicating with them for that uh, you might as a project manager you might have to use your, all your skills uh, you will have to use your communication skills uh, depending on the communication plan and the communication uh, the communication plan and the methods um, will differ depending on the communication plan your interpersonal skills because the more persons who are more resistant that you have identified as resistant or neutral or um, in that category you will the techniques the interpersonal skills that you try to do um, try to uh, when you're communicating with them is very important the body language or uh, you will have to start actively listening to them you try to you have to start building trust with them you have to move with them frequently and even management skills you will have to come across with management skills and um, with negotiating with them maybe a stakeholder is a supplier who's a bit of an arrogant supplier so negotiating with them with the with the agreements and uh, uh, trying to come to a consensus consensus into a middle level so you as a project manager you will have to use all your per your personal skills as well as management skills and communication methods in engaging with the stakeholders in the execution phase Lastly, monitoring part is nothing much the controlling part. This is where you try to understand whether your relationship with the stakeholder is, uh, whether your strategies for that stakeholder has worked or not. And then you will start adjusting your strategies. Uh, so we will have to review your uh, stakeholder um, matrix and see whether how they are you know, they were all the resistance stage now they are they are come to the neutral stage then then you will have to st start uh, um, tweaking your strategies how from neutral stage how you are going to take to the supportive stage so step by step uh, you will have to take them in so this is where you start monitoring and uh, adjusting your strategies as a project manager to uh, uh, to get the stakeholder engagement going on so you as a project manager might have to evaluate various options that is available, various communication options that is available um, to uh, to uh, to respond to the variances in the desired result. So you were expecting him to come within two to three months to the supportive role, but still he has not come. So what else can you do to get him um, to the supportive role? Uh, you might have to do some root cause and is why why he was agitated why he, he why he was shouting at that meeting last meeting so you had to do a you had to do a, uh, a root cause and is and see uh, why why all this communication for the last one and a half months had not got affected with that person he's still shouting at the at the um, at the uh, status update meetings yes he has some complaint to make make about the project so then your strategies have not worked out for the last one and a half months or so so now you have to defer your project your strategies to tackle the fellow uh, <clears throat> so you will have to prioritize your uh, your methods of engagement stakeholder engagement, and your preferred choice of engagements and prioritize and see 
what is the best method that each stakeholder can work out.